I'm Dr. Wong at Southeast Veterinary Neurology, and today we're going to be discussing cervical intervertebral disc disease. Intervertebral disc disease is a process by which the discs that lie between the bones of the spine degenerate. These discs normally act like shock absorbers, and they give mobility to the vertebral column. Oftentimes we think of the intervertebral disc as a jelly donut, where there is a jelly-like center and a fibrous outer portion. In many dogs, especially small dogs like the Dachshund, the Shizu, and French Bulldog, the jelly-like material on the inside becomes dehydrated and it degenerates and becomes a rough, gritty-like material. A slip disc occurs when the inner part of the disc tears through the fibrous capsule, allowing that gritty material to push up into the vertebral canal where the spinal cord sits. When this occurs, the spinal cord can be bruised and compressed. Some other terms for a slip disc include a herniated disc or a ruptured disc. Although there are different types of disc herniations in dogs, the type that I've just described is called a Hansen type 1 intervertebral disc disease, and it's the most common. Intervertebral disc disease is the most common spinal cord condition in dogs, but it's relatively uncommon in cats. When this disease process occurs in the spinal cord of the neck, it's called cervical disc disease. Clinical signs of cervical disc disease can be quite variable in appearance and severity. Many dogs with cervical IVDD may present with neck pain as the only clinical sign. Neck pain typically manifests as a low head carriage, an arched back or what we call a kyphotic posture, spontaneous crying or yelping, and sometimes we see muscle spasms in the neck. However, a variety of other clinical signs can be caused by cervical IVDD. In some cases, this disease can cause weakness in all four limbs, a wobbly or a toxic gait in all four limbs, holding up of one of the front limbs, or inability to move the legs in certain cases. We grade the severity of clinical signs on a scale of one to five. Grade one means that our patient is only experiencing pain. There's variability in the severity of neck pain, but this grade indicates that there are no deficits on the neurological examination. Grade two means that there's weakness and incoordination in all four limbs, but our patient is still able to walk on his or her own. Grade three means that the patient is too weak to walk independently, but can still move the legs and wag the tail. Grade four means that our patient is unable to move all four limbs, but is still able to feel the toes and tail. And grade five means that our patient is both paralyzed and unable to feel the toes. Although this is the most severe category, it is very unlikely to occur with cervical disc disease and is much more common with slip discs in the back. While IVDD is the most common disease in the spinal cord of the neck, there are other causes that can cause the exact same symptoms. For example, meningitis, myelitis, infections, tumors, and malformations can all cause pain, difficulty walking, or inability to walk in all four limbs. Each of these is treated differently and has a different likelihood of getting better. For this reason, tests are often recommended. Cervical disc disease is best diagnosed with an MRI. Although x-rays may suggest IVDD, advanced imaging is typically required to confirm the diagnosis. MRI is superior to CT as it is more sensitive in detecting changes in the soft tissue structures such as the spinal cord, the nerves, and the discs. A CAT scan can detect certain types of cervical disc problems but may miss others and will not show us things like meningitis and many tumors. There are two main treatment options for cervical disc disease, or slip discs in the neck. The first option is surgery. Surgery typically provides the greatest chance of curing a slip disc, and it's the most direct way to relieve the spinal cord compression. But surgery comes with the need for anesthesia and the risks associated with any surgical procedure. In the hands of an experienced neurologist, the chances of recovery with surgery are in the realm of 90 to 98%, depending on the severity of the initial symptoms. Dogs that are experiencing pain only typically have resolution of signs almost immediately after surgery. 
Dogs that are unable to walk have an excellent chance of regaining the ability to walk. After surgery, patients usually stay in the hospital with us for anywhere from two to three or four days for post-operative pain management, some rehabilitation, and post-operative monitoring. Although most dogs are typically feeling really well when they are discharged from the hospital, a period of strict rest after surgery is required at home. The second option requires strict rest and medications. With the non-surgical approach, our goal is to allow the hole in the fibrous capsule of the disc to heal over in order to minimize the likelihood of additional disc material coming out. The rest period is also going to allow time for the material that is already herniated to scar down and become less irritating to the spinal cord. Strict rest is the most important part of this approach. Typically, we recommend about 12 weeks of strict activity restriction. The first four weeks are usually in a crate, followed by four weeks in one small room, followed by four weeks in one level of the house. During this period, the pet only goes outside for purposes of urination and defecation. We also typically utilize medications to control pain and muscle relaxants to help our patients be more comfortable during their recovery. For dogs that are only experiencing pain and it's their first time, Rest in medications works about 75% of the time. Most dogs show improvement in the first week. Dogs that are unable to walk have closer to a 50% chance of regaining the ability to walk with rest in medications. In general, dogs that are treated with surgery typically improve faster, have a greater response rate, they have a lower likelihood of this happening again, and a lower likelihood of this getting worse. We hope that you find this information useful. Cervical disc disease is a very manageable problem in our patients, but without timely intervention, it can progress quickly and cause unnecessary pain and suffering. If you notice signs such as neck pain or difficulty walking, we strongly recommend that you bring your pet to a veterinary neurologist as soon as possible for the best chances of recovery. The experts here at Southeast Veterinary Neurology are here to help you.